pray that the Lord will bless us as we share together. Um, many of you probably already noticed that there's an insert in your bulletin. This is basically just kind of the little cheat sheet. In case you want to follow along with me, the scriptures I intend to use are kind of listed there in order. And there's some scriptures and some questions for you to ponder there as well. The scripture reading I'd like to share with you comes from the 17th chapter of the book of Alma. Many of you are already familiar with this. Uh, chapter 17, it's Alma speaking to his uh, son Helaman. And um, in that, he shares uh, an experience that happened to him when he was uh, a very bad boy, shall we say. Uh, chapter 17 of Alma, starting with verse 5. Now behold, I say unto you, if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But God has, by the mouth of his holy angel, made these things known unto me, not of any worthiness of myself. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angels to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us, as it were, the voice of thunder. And the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet, and we all fell to the earth, for the fear of the Lord came upon us. But behold, the voice said unto me, Arise. And I arose and stood up and beheld the angel. And he said unto me, If thou wilt not of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass, I fell to the earth, and it was for the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I the use of my limbs. And the angel spake more things unto me, which were heard by my brethren. But I did not hear them, for when I heard the words, If thou wilt not be destroyed of thyself, seek no more to destroy the church of God, I was struck with such great fear and amazement, lest perhaps I should be destroyed, that I fell to the earth. And I did hear no more. But I was racked with eternal torment, for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree and racked with my sins. Yea, I did remember all of my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, I had murdered many of his children, or rather led them away unto destruction. Yea, in fine, so great had been my iniquities that the very thoughts of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. O oh, thought I that I could be banished and become extinct, both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now, as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me who art in the gall of bitterness and art encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now, behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was hard up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy! And what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels in the attitude of singing and praising their God. And yea, my soul did long to be there. But behold, my limbs did receive their strength again. 
And I stood upon my feet and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. Very pleased to be here this morning. Um, thank you, ladies, each one, for your ministry of music. It was very wonderful. I, I appreciate that. As you know, I read from the Book of Alma, um, an experience that um, basically the 17th chapter of Alma is his, his words to his son, Helaman. Um, and as Alma shared with Helaman his experience with the angel, he, he knew and was very much aware of the very pains that his thoughts could cause him. He did, as you know, many things that were wrong. And because of those things swirled in his mind, uh, for a while there, they just became a part of who he was. Um, Several of you have already mentioned the scripture from um, the 10th chapter of Moroni. I'd like to share with you again. It's kind of our uh, theme for the year and for this, the month as well. And um, it says, Yea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him, and deny yourself of all ungodliness. And if you shall deny yourself of all ungodliness, and love the Lord with all your might, mind, and strength, then... Is his grace sufficient for you? Today I'd like to talk specifically about uh, our minds and our thoughts and, and, and that aspect of that. Uh, I'm sure you all know that in order to keep our minds clean, we have to deny ourselves, like Alma said, of all ungodliness. And I think that starts with keeping sin out of our minds. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. I mean, it's, it's, some, it's hard to do. It would take a good effort. But I think the important thing is we need to try. David, uh, in the Old Testament, spoke some words to his son Solomon, and I'd like to share those with you. They're found in... Um, First book of Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 9. First Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. David had a lot of things to say. But as you know, there's nothing that can be hidden from God. He knows our every thought. He knows the good thoughts. He knows the bad thoughts. And like David said, he searches our hearts and he understands all those imaginations of our thoughts. Bad thoughts draw us away from Christ. Good thoughts bring us closer to him. Life, uh, it has been said by many that life is a journey, and I think it's a good idea to start the journey of each of our days by talking with God, by seeking him in prayer and in worship, and I believe that if we do truly move forward with that endeavor to seek him, we will find him. 
we seek him and we find him. We also need to love and to serve him. And how do we serve him? With all of our might, mind, and strength. There's um, many places in the scriptures, as you know, where it speaks of serving the Lord with all of our might, mind, and strength, and you know that. And, uh, but serving him in that way is not just a good thing to do. It, it is actually a commandment. And I'd like to share that with you. It comes from uh, the Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verse 2a. Section 59, verse 2a. Wherefore, I give unto them a commandment, saying thus, Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, mind, and strength, and in the name of Jesus Christ, thou shalt serve him. How do we show the Lord that we love him? I, I think a good example that the Doctrine and Covenants references right there is that we show him our love by our service to him, by serving him. By serving him with all of our might, mind, and strength. When I say strength, there's uh, two kinds of strength. Stu, Stu I'm going to use your name for a minute. The uh, one kind of strength is just sheer power. Like when a former USC Trojan knows that he's right there on the line and the guys on the other side are those nasty UCLA Bruins. You don't have to encourage Stu too much when he knows it's against the Bruins because, boom, you will see that sheer power. But that strength that I'm talking about, it can also be used in a different way. The strength can also be another word for your talents. Like Violet has many talents. Violet has many strengths. Kind of the same connotation. But that kind of strength varies with each one of us. Students' kind of strength isn't had by many at all. But the point is, whatever that strength or that talent is that you have, we need to use it in our way of serving him. And we need to serve him with everything that we have. In the scriptures it says to give full measure. Well, the 2020 translation of that is you're supposed to give 110%. There's a lot of things that people do to help others or to do what they want to do or just in life in general, there's a lot of things they try to do. But when we serve the Lord, we need to make sure that those things that we do are clean things. In the first book of Nephi, chapter 4, we find these words. First Nephi, chapter 4. Verse 58, but behold, I say unto you, the kingdom of God is not filthy, and there can not any unclean thing enter into the kingdom of God. So remember, give him all that you have. Give him full measure. Give him 110%. But make sure it's something clean and good and serve him with that which is clean and is good. <clears throat> and I know it's, uh, it can be difficult to be clean and good, be, to be perfect, so to speak, in, in this world that we live in. And um, some of you might say, well, yeah, what is, I, I can't do all that. I mean, I got... Pains, I got afflictions, I got troubles, I got all these things bothering me, you know. 
maybe the Lord could just, you know, take away all those troubles and problems and afflictions that I have. Well, our friend Alma, back in the 17th chapter, he, uh, he talked about that for a few minutes, and I'd like us to go back to that. Alma 17, let's look at verse 3. And now, my son Helaman, behold, thou art in thy youth, and therefore I beseech of thee that thou wilt hear my words and learn of me. For I do know that whatsoever, that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials and their troubles and their afflictions and shall be lifted up at the last day. Now, notice that it doesn't say that uh, all of your troubles and problems will go away. But it does say that if you will be supported, you will be helped. There's still going to be trials. There's still going to be troubles. There's still going to be afflictions. And that's why we need to keep in touch with him, to always put our trust in God. And when those trials and those troubles and those afflictions come upon us, we need to give those to the Lord. Seek him in prayer and ask him for his help and his support if he has promised. If you see that someone you know has trials and troubles and afflictions, and if the Lord is pointing that out to you, perhaps that's a clue that maybe you're one of the ones that are going to help with that problem. So take on that challenge. But when you help, like Jim just said, give it your all. Give it full measure. Give it 110%. And if you put forth that effort and you do it and you work hard, again, you know the, you know the drill. Make sure you do it with all your might, mind, and strength. Now for scripture reading, I, I read all the troubles of uh, Alma and his, uh, his experience there. I'd like to look at that just in a little closer detail here. Um, let's look at uh, chapter 17, verses 10 through 12. But I was racked with eternal torment for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree and racked with all my sins. Yea, I did remember all my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God, and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, and I had murdered many of his children, or rather, led them away unto destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquities that the very thoughts of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. How great are your sins? How is it, how do we evaluate our sins? Um, do we say, oh, well, that was... Oh, boy, that was kind of a big one there. Or, oh, well, that's just kind of a little one. That's it's really no big deal, you know. Uh, how do you evaluate those sins? And would your opinion change? If you knew that at any moment, the Lord God Almighty would be standing right there in front of you, I 
I wonder if we really would say that he's standing right there. Oh, yeah, well, that one was just a little one. That one's really no big deal. Got it? I don't think so. And Alma was worried about that himself. And let's look at um, verses 13 through 17, also in the 17th chapter. Oh, thought I that I could be banished and become extinct, both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that, that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now, as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who art in the gall of bitterness and art encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was hard up by the memory of my sins no more. That was a good thing. Perhaps when you've sinned, perhaps you've felt your conscience, conscience being pricked. Maybe you've felt that pain or anguish in the pit of your stomach. And while that's not a good feeling, and while it's going to be painful recognizing our sins, we also need to remember what Alma found out, that when he realizes that there is a Christ and that he has come to atone for the sins that we committed, then that anguish and pain can turn into joy and exuberance. And that joy is also expressed by Alma. Let's look at uh, verses 18 through 21, also in the 17th chapter. And oh, what joy and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again, I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw, even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels, in the attitude of singing and praising their God, and my soul did long to be there. But behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. Yes, our mind and our heart can be greatly pained by the sins that we commit, but if we look to him, if we look to God and remember that he is our path to salvation, our hearts can also, and our minds also, can be filled with great joy and sweet joy indeed. And of course, that choice is ours. As some of you might be able to tell, um, I like sports. I like to. Uh, I like certain teams. I like certain players. I even like this player right here. Good seafood. 
Um, I like to watch my teams on TV and, um, or in person, and, and, I, and I support them. Those who coach those teams, they try to inspire them. They, t- they try to inspire each member of the team to play their hardest, to play their smartest, and to do that with all their might, mind, and strength. Some coaches will even use what they call bulletin board material. That's right. They will, uh, it's usually some kind of a publication. Might be an article in a newspaper. Might be an article on the internet. And um, it's some words that when they're read, the coaches hope it will inspire the person to do their very best. And if it works, if it works, that person does do their very best. And because they've done their very, very best, great and marvelous things will happen for the team. Well, in case you didn't all know it, each one of you has been selected to be on God's team. Pretty good team, too. they got a great record, by the way. Um, But why is... This is made to simulate a bench. Like when basketball players are in there playing basketball, you know? Well, there's only so many allowed on a team. And the rest of them have to sit someplace like this, you know? Well, until it's their turn. But... The nice thing about you guys all being on God's team, there's no bench player. Every one of you is a starter. And guess what? You've also got bulletin board material, each one of you. The little hand out there, the one with the picture on it, with the person who's deep in thought about praying for all of you, of course. These last two paragraphs from Alma, those are, that's your bulletin board material. Now, how you use it, that's up to you. But if you want bulletin board material to pump your team up, that's it right there. Uh, Let me share those words with you. Yea, let all thy doings be unto the Lord, and whithersoever thou goest, Let it be in the Lord. Yea, let thy thoughts be directed unto the Lord. Yea, let the afflictions of your heart be placed upon the Lord forever. Counsel the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. Yea, and when thou liest down at night, lie down unto the Lord, that he may watch over you in your sleep. And when thou risest in the morning, let thy heart be full of thanks unto God. And if ye do these things, you shall be lifted up at the last days. One quick little short story in closing here. Um, There was a young girl. She only lived three or four blocks from her school. And so her mother allowed her to walk to and from school each day for for her schooling. And in the morning, the girl got up, and she'd already departed and gone to the school for the day. But later on during the day, a thunderstorm arose. And in fact, the weatherman said it was kind of one of those things they call like a lightning storm with frequent bursts of lightning. The mother knew the girl had her umbrella with her, but um, she was kind of concerned because the girl was still kind of young. And so um, the mother got in her car, and she, she knew about when school was going to get out, and so she drove up there to kind of be ready to see if, you know, the daughter needed some help or needed a ride, or she could help her in some way. And she just watched and observed her daughter for a moment, and she saw that uh, the girl was walking along with her umbrella, and the lightning would flash, and the little girl would stop and look up at the sky and smile. And that happened three or four times, and 
finally, the mother's curiosity got the better of her, and, and she pulled over to the side of the road there and asked her daughter, well, why do you, why do you keep looking up all the time? I don't, I don't get that, you know? And the girl says, well, you know, I'm just trying to look pretty. God's trying to take my picture a lot, you know? I hope that as you uh, go through the rest of your day and the rest of your week that uh, you'll not get down, that you'll, uh, if the storms of life happen to come at you, that you will face them bravely, strongly, and certainly you will give it all of your might, mind, and strength.